Welcome into week seven of the Ragsdale Rumble. I am your host, Big Mike. And ladies and gentlemen, I will announce right away before we announce the competitors, we have a, a game. Uh, started off kind of rough. Herb started down four games after the second and third weeks. But the last three weeks has been clawing and chipping away at the lead. He is now one game behind after gaining another game last week. Uh, so don't to make Go sure Nebraska. every week. <laughs> Never thought we'd say that ever in our lives, right. but hey, whatever works, whatever keeps you in the game. Right. Uh, but so that being said, do I was, do I get to give this shirt to Raj soon? Then I'm not I wearing that shirt. Have, well, they'll have to tune in next week to see if you can claw back another game. If we have any disputes uh, on this week's game, as we as we get into week seven slate, and a pretty good pretty good week this week. Uh, a lot of good games, uh, but we will get into deductions. Uh, still standing at first place by a game. We have Raj. How are you doing today, Raj? I'm doing fantastically splendid on this beautiful Sunday evening. Uh, Dolph, my, uh, excuse me, Alabama won yesterday. My Dolphins won today. It's a good day. Herb is still losing, and Good's I'm up. still winning. Yes, sir. I think we need to get fantastically splendid on a T-shirt. We were talking about T-shirts. I, I like that phrase. Yes. And, yes and we can do I know that. you use that every week, and I, yes, I like it. Yes, yes. We need to get definitely that needs to be one of the T-shirts we put on there. Fantastically splendid. Yes. Um, as we talk about T-shirts, we have the T-shirt king himself, who has a yes. second-place T-shirt on because he is still a game behind. Herb, how are you doing today? Uh, I just I need to pick two games different from Raj this week. I need to I need so I'm going to see him next week. I want to hand over this T-shirt. Not going to happen. I I will use it to clean the car. I'm not. That's wearing fine this shirt. because you are a loser. So that's oh fine. wow. <laughs> wow. Trash talking starting early. Well, we'll see Start how early. it goes. Okay. We get it kicked off on Friday night. Uh, one in four Stanford going into Colorado, who just had a yeah. real, real uh, close win against Arizona State. Sorry if I can learn how to talk. Uh, mm -hmm. One in four Stanford against four and two Colorado. Colorado is favored by ten and a half, and the game is in Boulder. Uh, Herb, as per the rules, you're still behind the game, so you go first. Who you have and why? Losers first. Uh, I mean, Stanford has put up more points this year than I thought they would. Uh, but having said that, they're still dreadful. Um, Still trying to figure out their place in the world, I guess. Colorado is making things tougher than it has to be these past couple weeks. But if you're going to make a bowl and still do something meaningful, home games against Stanford, you got to take care of business. So I'm going with Colorado. I would not be shocked, though, if they don't cover this game. So. And it is early in the week. You know, just so everybody knows, we are recording this on Sunday. So I'm not sure if Travis Hunter's coming back either. Okay. Um, or, or Shiloh Sanders. We have have not heard. Hopefully, we'll hear something uh, before this goes live, which, you know, obviously may not change the picks. Uh, but just with that being said, uh, Raj, who do you have more? Yeah, I was going to ask that too. Was Travis Hunter going to be back? Um, looks like Deion said he's he's doing well, but I'm not sure when he'll be back. So, I, I, with that being said, he's not going to be back for the Stanford game, even though. He's not going to be back. I'm still going to say Colorado and that that offense. I think Shador is playing really, really good. Um, no longer a Heisman candidate because of these couple of losses that he had, uh, but he's still looking pretty good. Scrambling a lot, taking a few hits here and there, but I, I'm still going to take Colorado's offense in this game. And Stanford's just not the same Stanford that we're used to seeing in years past. Um, yep. So, yeah, I got Colorado in this game. And keep in mind, Colorado, you know, without Travis Hunter and – Shiloh Sanders still has Cormani McLean, who was the number one recruit uh, overall last season. Uh, hadn't played a lot early because apparently he can't show up on time or take his earrings out because that's a big thing with Dion. Uh, you know those kind of things in meetings. But apparently, yeah. when he once he gets on the field, he balls like a you know like a top recruit. So he's, okay. he's played pretty good. Um, so that with that being said, both guys uh, will pick Colorado, and we will move on to the next game. Uh, coming down into the SEC, Texas A&M, after a tough loss, tough loss at Alabama, travels into Tennessee uh, to play the University of Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee is currently favored by three points, so we've got a fairly close line. Uh, Rod, you're up first. Who do you have more? I had a feeling you might pick this one. This is an interesting game. First thing I did was I looked to see who Tennessee played yesterday. They were off yesterday. Uh, they had a bye. Uh, obviously, we saw what happened when uh, we went to College Station to beat a and Um I don't know. I really don't know about this one. I think I'm going to lean. Let's see. Tennessee's at home. Yeah. And they're favored by yeah. three. I'm going to yeah. go with Tennessee at home. I could see A&M having a bounce back game and playing a little cleaner. And they still have a pretty good front seven as long as they're healthy. I'm still going to take. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What am I doing here? I'm now trying to think about who Herb's going to pick. Uh, You know, I'm going to stick with my first answer. I'm going to stick with. No. Yeah, I'm going to stick with Tennessee. I'm going to stick with Tennessee at home to cover. Yeah. Raj goes with Tennessee, and as, as he alluded to, could we have the first anti-brother pick? Uh, Herb, who do you have and why? 
No, I cuz I mean one of the key points he put in there you're coming off the emotional game with uh with Alabama. Really it seemed like A&M had a couple, you know, like 2 3 weeks in a row where it's tough. Honestly, I feel like Tennessee you're going to get a much different beast at home. You're going to get um much better play there and then that one week of rest I think will probably be yeah. the difference. So that's why no, I was waiting for Raj to pick A&M. Do I think A&M is the better team? Yeah. If you flip-flop yeah. the things if Tennessee was coming off the Bama loss and they were traveling to A&M, I'd be all over A&M. So um really this game is I guess basically a pick 'em and Tennessee's getting 3 points for being at home. Yep. But I feel like the rest right. is really what's going to put them down in this game. So I'm I'm going with Tennessee. But I was hoping Raj would pick A&M just for that purpose. <laughs> Well, we got a few other games. We'll see what happens. Yeah. We're going to stay in the SEC. Uh, and Florida at four and two is going to travel into South Carolina, who is only two and three this season, although they are favored by two and a half over Florida. Um, Herb, you're up first. Who do you have more? I really hope you pick Florida because hmm. I'm taking South Carolina at home. Florida does not seem to travel very well. It's like all the games that they play well in are home games. Um, it's like they're the Utah of the of the sec um spencer Riley loves playing at home this will be one of those games where you're going to get like 300 yards you know two touchdowns one on the ground that, that sort of situation plus if you're south carolina you got to get every win you can since this season is kind of going off the rails not the way you want it so taking south carolina purely because they're at home all right Raj. same i got i got to take <laughs> south carolina at home uh last time i think florida went to kentucky was our last road game and they lost by like almost 20 points or something like that. I remember picking Kentucky in that game, but go ahead. Someone else picked Florida. I I don't remember. It might have been Mike. Who knows? It it might have. It might have been. Probably not, though. I'm I'm looking – oh, my gosh. So petty. (laughs) I'm looking for Florida's road woes to continue here. I I, I just don't think they're going to have one it takes. And I I don't know. I was – I thought Spencer Rattler was going to have a better year year than he's having right now. They're two and three, but I I think he's going to bounce back this game and and keep him up at 500. So I I got South Carolina winning this game. Last time he looked bad, but today he'll bounce back. Bounce back. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Next up, we're going to go to probably one of the more boring games, even though it does feature two teams with two really good records. Five and one Iowa travels into Wisconsin to play four and one Wisconsin. Uh, Not enough. Wisconsin is favored by nine and a half. Uh, and Rod, you're up first. Uh, who do you think was going to win? I'm going to be completely honest, Mike. I don't care about this game one bit at all. I, it has no relevance to us or the CFP or any conference type. Well, yeah, yeah I don't think these teams are going to make it to the conference title again. Again, um, five and one and four and one. They're both. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Records. You're right. We, you're right. You're right. And it, it's at Wisconsin, correct? Yes, sir. They're both basically lucky that they play in the West, is what you're saying, Mike. I'm. I'll just take Wisconsin simply because. What's the line? I'm sorry. What's the line? Nine and a half. Uh, Wisconsin by nine and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take. Yeah. I'll take Wisconsin at home. Um, and Iowa's quarterback got hurt, even though they won the last couple games, right? I have no idea. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not, I took, I'm not I, I took a couple of these games just to see, just to keep you guys interested in games right. you know, would normally watch. And this was a good game with two good teams that I know none of us would watch otherwise. So I tried to put a little bit on it. So in case you guys go kind of like the Nebraska game last week, right. uh, so it's really why this one's in here. There's a couple of them in here this week. Uh, yeah. So asking me any technical information about players, I, I, I I know yeah, it was TJ Matt, Hawkins it was McNamara, played Iowa. I think the the Michigan transfer and he got hurt uh, two games ago. So they still won a game without him. Uh but we know their offense is woeful yeah. and Wisconsin's playing at home. Uh and yeah. actually like you said Mike got a lot to play mm-hmm. for with the division. So I'm going Wisconsin at home. Yep. Okay. Another agreement there. Uh, so far uh everyone agreeing four games in. Uh we will travel to the Pac-12 uh, three and three Arizona traveling into four and one Washington State. Uh, Washington State is currently favored by nine points. Herb, you're up first. Uh, what do you think? Arizona, who just lost to uh, to USC, barely well, lost to USC. Barely. And yeah. USC, USC defense is just not that great. Yeah, yeah the, and the quarterback, brand new quarterback. I can't remember his name, but it's only his. This will be his third start. He's played really right. good. The two starts, so you know that may give them a little life against a you know, kind of a yep. hot Washington State team, four and one. Yeah, they lost. They just lost a tough one though to UCLA. Um, Arizona stayed up late, played that game. Um, Washington State has to be. It, it just seems like Washington State's another one of those teams. Like 
get me back home, you know, give me a chance to beat up on an inferior opponent, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to take Washington State. And it might be fairly big in this game. I think Arizona went all out against USC, and they're going to have a much tougher time at Washington State. So I'll take a Washington State big. All right. Herb takes Washington State. Raj, uh, what are your thoughts? Guess what, guys? I'm also picking Washington State. Yeah, yes, I knew I you were not going to take no Arizona at the road. The road. I, I like I like Washington State's quarterback Ward. He's got over almost 1,600 passing yards, 14 touchdowns, only two interceptions. Um, I think he's the far more superior quarterback, and I think Washington State has a better offense. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Washington State in this game at home by two touchdowns. All right. Uh, both people, both guys picking Washington State. Again, another agreement there. Uh, now we get into some of the nitty-gritty games. Uh, USC traveling outside of the Pac-12 after that close win against Arizona that we mentioned. Traveling to Notre Dame, who is 5-2, and two, two tough losses. Uh, but Notre Dame is actually favored by two points at home. Uh, Rod, you're up first. Uh, who do you have and why? I, I, I can see why Notre Dame's favorite. USC has a good offense, but their defense is just um, putrid. <laughs> I like that word. Uh, yeah, USC just doesn't have. You a act like you defense. came up with that word. Like you're the first person. <laughs> I said that because I think you said that on the show one yeah, or two uh, weeks ago. I you did. said putrid, I did. so I think I think that's going to be one of those words. We got fantastically splendid as a term. That putrid is going to be a word, and then you say you're something something bounce back. Uh, that Drake uh, comment. Anyway. Yeah, Drake um, said that. I thought I said that, but that's fine. Anyway, he, he um, may have copied I, me. That's fine. I think. This is going to be an interesting game. I think Notre Dame's defense is going to help keep them in the game. And I could – oh, man. I'm going to go with Notre Dame covering this game. I'm going to go with Notre Dame. I, I, I could see USC winning because often I think they might be able to put up a little more points. But I think Notre Dame's defense is going to keep them in the game and Notre Dame is going to prevail. I like Here how you tried to sound a little smarter uh, trying to say Notre Dame will cover a two-point game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have much choice. Uh, Rod, uh, Herb? Herb seems like he's very excited. Oh, he's what is he doing? Herb, Herb, what do you think is going to happen in the game? This is the longest. I don't even know. I, I don't even know if this is an anti rod pick, yeah, though, but I had it. to do the dance. I mean, I was going to take – I think I was going to take – USC before this. I, I told myself I'm going to pick the opposite of what Raj picks, but after Notre Dame burned me against Ohio State, I just can't stick with it. Yeah, will Notre Dame score more against USC than they probably have against anybody else? Yeah, but I just believe in Caleb Williams making enough plays to win this game over Notre yeah. Dame. And this last game, losing to Louisville the way they did, that just – had Notre Dame beat Louisville and made me beat them handily, I'd, I'd believe in them a little bit more. But I think this line is a byproduct of Notre Dame staying at home, the defense being well, you know, playing really well, and then USC's last game. But I think USC gets up for this game. I think they play well, and I think they win. Well, keep in mind, USC's had two close games because they had the last second at Colorado the week before, so they've struggled defensively a lot this season, and especially the last two games. Uh, but we do have our first disagreement. Rod's going with Notre Dame, Herb going with USC. Could this be the only – Change up no. that we have. We will see we'll going see. forward. We're, we're uh, disagreeing on uh, the next game too. So, who do you think the next game is going to be? Just to see. I'm, take, I'm taking Oregon on the road at Washington. That's not the next game. Uh -huh. Why would it be? Uh -huh. that, may uh -huh. later, that may come up later in the show. But in the next game, we're going to travel to the ACC. I got to keep you on your toes. Why Mike, are we leaving the conference, Mike? <laughs> it's Mike's show. We can do whatever. It's my show, and that's what I want to do. Oh. I was, so I was Miami, picking Oregon anyway. Miami, well, all right, since everybody's going to pick whoever they want to pick, we already know who's going to pick Oregon. We'll go to Oregon and Washington. <laughs> oh, no, Mike, I've already I've already flipped over to ACC, Mike. Can't go back. Can't go back. So right. Miami and North Carolina. <laughs> so, yeah, Miami at 4-1, and one, tough loss, uh, kind of a bonehead loss last week. The uh, worst, four stupidest one. loss maybe ever. Yeah. Travels into 5-0 and oh, North Carolina and Drake May. Um North Carolina is favored before at four and a half at home. Uh, and I believe since we got off the rails, I think, Herb, you go first this time. Who do you have and why? I'm going to take North Carolina at home. Um, this this motivation thing has bit me several times, and I'm going to say it again. North Carolina, a uh, great chance to play for ACC title this year. Um, Miami has looked good. The offense has been much better than I thought, but that, that last loss. I mean, I'm sure they're going to come out on fire. Um, and want to erase what just happened against Georgia Tech. But I'm going to take North Carolina at home. Did North Carolina even play last week? Why do I not remember their game? They played uh, yesterday, no, no. yeah. 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 They, oh, they, they whooped up on that. Syracuse. Yeah, yeah. 40-7. to seven. Drake May, yeah, Drake May showed out. Uh, I'm taking North Carolina, too. No. Little known fact, he is Drake's younger cousin. Go ahead, Raj. 
right, oh, the Drake kinda... connection. So his first yeah, name Drake, is Drake, Drake because he's Drake's yeah. cousin. Uh, I got you. Yeah, I, I got North Carolina's offense in this game. Um, yeah, I, I, I watched the replays of what Miami did yesterday, and that was just I, – I could not understand. I said, like, why don't you just down the ball button? Say, hey, let's run and get a yeah. turnover. Maybe that will make yeah. sense. But I, Or I, I, I when you have a chance out. to kneel the ball, uh, why don't you just throw a one-hopper to it at wide receiver outside? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, I mean those what, are great plays. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like what Milro, just run, just run out there and just throw the ball as high as you can. Just throw the ball, <laughs> but one-hop it and just, you know, yeah. stop the clock. That's what you should do. Yeah, folks. but – That's uh, winning I, football. I, I got North Carolina too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Everybody going North Carolina there. And, and I kind of agree with you guys. You know, I don't know that I would ever had ever thought I would see a coach at four and one get more calls for his job for one bad decision yeah. than I have for crystal ball today um, on the internet. It's, it's been kind of crazy watching Miami fans call for his head when they're still four and one. Um, I guess it's a bad loss to a bad Georgia tech team, but you're crystal still ball. Yeah. Crystal ball wasn't using the crystal ball. Ah, there it is. Nice. Raj coming with a pun. You can, right, you can you tell see. Raj is a dad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Since we were in the ACC, we will travel now to the SEC again, since I like to jump around trying to get those frequent flyer miles. Missouri travels into Kentucky. Both teams are 5-1, and one, coming off a tough loss this past week. Uh, Kentucky is favored by two and a half at home. Uh, Raj, you're up first. Who do you have in one? I think Kentucky wins at home. I think uh, Davis, the Kentucky's running back. I know he had a rough game yesterday. They played Georgia, the the number one team in the country. I'm not gonna say the best team in the country, the number one team in the country. Um, so that was gonna be a tough game anyway. I didn't see Georgia putting up 51 against them, which was kind of scary. But it is what it is. But I think Kentucky bounces back and, and wins this one at home. Nope. And we've got a dance Uh-oh. going. Uh oh. Herb, Herb, what's your pick for the game? Oh, stop! Please stop dancing. You're gonna break the camera. Anti Raj pick. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking Missouri on the road. I feel like, what is this, a 6 30 uh, y'all's time? Yeah. 7 30 my time game. I feel like around 8 o'clock, 8 15, I'll go, why did I do this? But I'm going to take Missouri um, to bounce back here, not just because of Drake, just because I think they will. Uh, it does worry me with the game being at Kentucky and Kentucky just looking really bad this past week, but. Um, you know, Missouri still has a lot to play for. I'm going to take them on the road here. All right, there we go. The anti-Raj pick, Missouri going against Kentucky. Uh, another another disagreement there, so we have a good chance to move around some here, uh, see if Herb can pull back that one game. We're going to leave the SEC and travel all the way out to the Pac-12 again, uh, but not the game you're thinking of. UCLA at 4-1 and one, travels to Oregon State, who is and 5-1. Oregon State is currently favored by five points. Uh, Herb, you're up first. Who do you have in one? Definitely Oregon State at home. I think, what is my one Oregon State game that I – so they lost at Washington State, but no, we thought that. Um, even the Oregon fan on our show one time commented on how much Oregon State is building up and how much they, you know, how well the program is coming along. And uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff has just looked, what, great since he escaped <laughs> yeah. and got out there. So uh, I like them at home. I know Raj is kind of he, – he likes to pick Ukla, so I hope he does here too as well. But I think Oregon State rolls him at home. Unfortunately, I'm going to – I'm going to go with Oregon State uh, to DJ threw for five touchdowns. Surprisingly, threw for five touchdowns. Had a pretty clean game yesterday. Because yeah, he had like four touchdowns the whole time he was at Clemson. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, but Oregon State's looking good. I think their defense is starting to come along, too, as as, as each week progresses. So I'm going to go with Oregon State. And I'm, I wanted to say the other team, but just to say their name. So I'm just going to say Ukla just for the heck of it. But gotcha. uh, I am going to pick Oregon State to win the game. Yep. It's Ukla. So, and I have a question too. Is it just Clemson and former Clemson quarterbacks get nicknames? Because that's the only nicknames I've heard is Clover Lang for their current quarterback. Yeah. And DJ Jazzy Jeff for their former quarterback. Is it- it's because they were there at the same time and we were yeah. discussing that that position or that particular dynamic a lot, which is why they both. But DJ Jazzy Jeff really like leaned into it. So, yeah. I don't know. We can call Drake May uh, Cousin Drake. That'll work for me. That. Doesn't sound right, but okay, we can go with <laughs> Just hey, to look, foster this, chaos look, this, and confusion is what yes. I what I go for. Look, you come for the gambling and the picks, but you stay for the behind the scenes of the Herbert Rodge podcast. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> with the, the creators of the Herbert Rodge podcast. That's why we all know you're here. So we appreciate you tuning <laughs> in. Make sure you check out their podcast, like and subscribe. Yes. So you get to catch them every Tuesday at seven. 
Uh, but we will move again back. Uh, actually, we're going to go to the ACC, back to the other side of the country. Uh, North Carolina State goes into Duke. Uh, Duke is currently favored by three. Um, obviously, on a, I'm still going to guess on a backup quarterback. I never heard you know, how bad his ankle was um, the other day. Uh, but Duke is currently favored. Rod, you have the first pick. Could you have one? I mean, you said it right there. Duke's uh, back. I don't know. How, did Duke, first of all, did Duke play yesterday? Uh, I don't actually have their records written down. I did that one okay. last year. I to write the records down, so I don't know if they played yesterday. I think at the beginning of the season, we talked to an NC State fan and um, or a former player from NC State, and he, he kept on um, telling us no, how, Raj, how they, good – No, they were off. Their last loss was at Notre Dame. Okay. And okay. he kept telling us about how good NC State's defense was, and I think they've been looking pretty decent this year. So I'm going to go with NC State in that defense to win. And the game is at Duke, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm going to go – I'm going to pick NC State to win. Well, not even anti-Raj pick, just at home, I'm taking Duke. Um, a lot of this is an anti-NC State pick. Like, I'm mad at them for blowing that game against Louisville for me. <laughs> their defense has looked good all year, but their offense is just, like, pathetic. They're like yeah. Milrow in his first game kind of sad stuff. So, I'm going to go oh, – sorry, I do love you, Milrow. I do love the game you had yesterday, too, so I apologize for that. Um that's the main reason why. Except yeah, dude. Except for the one throw you made fun of earlier. Say what? Except for the one throw you made fun of earlier, where you're making fun of him for throwing the one back. I'm making fun yeah. of the 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 decision to not kneel the no, ball. Uh, if you're going to go for that pass, you can't, yeah. like, five hop it to somebody. If you're going right, to throw right, that right. pass, that guy needs to catch it <laughs> and yeah. score a I touchdown agree. or whatever. <laughs> I'm with you, but it was just yeah. the kind of the, the juxtaposition of, hey, I love you, Milro, but I'm going to make fun of you a little earlier. Oh, I'm what definitely going to make fun of you. I will make fun of that throw to the – because I'm sure yeah. Saban was not making fun of that throw. I'm sure he was uh, uh, ripping him a new one for that one. So, uh, But I'm still going to take Duke at home. I think with with no matter who's in there for Duke, NC State just doesn't score enough to make you – you know, to win these games, and that's just it. Yeah. Their defense will keep them in. It'll be close. It'll be low scoring, but Duke will find a way to win in the end. All right, another disagreement there. Quite a, quite a few disagreements this week after a after – a, very slow start uh, to the picks, uh, but we do travel back out to the Pac-12 for the final game, the big game of the day, which is why I did it last. Game days there in Seattle, uh, you know, the biggest game of the nation, according to ESPN, which is why we're doing it last, Rod. I heard since you wanted to pull it up earlier that I didn't go stay in the Pac-12. Uh, Oregon travels into Seattle to play Washington, both teams at 5-0. and oh. They currently have Washington as a three-point favorite, I'm guessing, just because they're at home. Uh, Herb, you're up first. Who do you have and why? Man, I'm taking Oregon in this one. Love what Penix and Washington have done. Um, mm -hmm. They, they, you know, scored well. But I, I feel like on both sides of the ball, Oregon has imposed themselves. Um, what if that dude uh, who's quarterback, if I can't remember his name, um, but he's playing really well. Uh, and, I, man, I love landing as a coach, man. He gets those guys fired up. I, I think – they figure out a way to, to, to not, you know, maybe not stop Washington, but slow them down. I think they get enough stops, and I think they win this game. Right to you. I also got Oregon. I think they're the be better team on both sides of the ball. Penix Jr. might be the better quarterback, just statistically speaking. He, he can throw for more yards than Bo Nix, but I think Oregon's defense is going to help them win this game. It's going to be a pretty high-scoring game. Uh, it's not going to be like a 20-10 to 10 type of matchup, maybe 30-40, yeah. to 40, something like that. But I, I got Oregon winning this game. And if you just look at some of Oregon's – Previous games with their scores, I mean, they're they're pretty much keeping a lot of their opponents to under under in, at least single digits, with the exception of a few teams here and there. But right, uh, Washington. Now, with that being said, Washington is at home. Washington is going to put up some points, but I think Oregon's defense will will get a few stops late in the game and help them win the game. I agree with that. All right. I am I interested think you, to see what I mean, color uniforms gonna, Oregon's going to win. Yeah, where, whatever. This is like one of those games where like two or three stops like wins you the whole game, and it just yeah. feels like Oregon's more likely to get you those two or three. That's pretty much what I said. Yep. Yeah, and kind of a side to the game. I wasn't really <laughs> listening while you were talking. Like sometimes when you start talking, I go, "Oh my god, the guy is uh, lying." But when Mike's talking, I'm like, "This." Ah, me? yes, sir. Well, ah, of course. No. The lack of respect, I can feel it. Okay. I mean, you know, I love you. It's tangible, is what they say. <laughs> yeah. Tangible, you can touch it. You got it. Anyway, yeah. Sorry. Brotherly love. You gotta love. Yes. It. Yes. So with that being said, do you guys think with uh, Caleb struggling over the past week, the winner of this Oregon and Washington matchup is, will bring out the front runner for the Heisman? It's weird because Bo Nix mm. has like zero Heisman hype right. like, at all. I mean, he's got know? billboards in New York. They put billboards up for him. I, I don't know what that 
has to do with I, anything, but they, they try. Caleb Williams has plenty of height. Michael Pen or however Penix does in this game will will put him up there. Yeah, I regardless for sure. Yeah, um, like if, if Washington loses and Penix throws for like. Let's just say he throws for like 350, 400 yards and they lose by like a field goal. I think it's only going to help his chances as far Definitely. as the highest is concerned. But if they Definitely. get blown out and he just plays horrible, throws interceptions, then obviously he's yeah. going to do that. But, yeah, to Hurd's point, I haven't really heard too much about Bo Nix in the Heisman uh, race as of, as of right now. Um, I wasn't aware of his billboards in New York. But um, and I kind of I think Caleb's still up there, obviously. Um, but I don't know. I think Penix Jr. is still going to be the front one of the front runners. All right. Well, there you have it. We have, uh, I, I want to say, three disagreements, so there will be some movement. Will Herb gain another game and tie it up next week as he travels to visit his brother Raj, or will Raj take another game lead uh, into next week and be able to gloat all that much more? Uh, to find out, you'll have to tune in Saturday. We appreciate yep. being with us, and hope you guys have a great day of football. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide, everybody.